Hello Akira Bike Project fans, welcome back. We left off the last update with modifications to the steering column and fixes to get rid of some run out there and a nice upgrade to the instrument cluster and dash. The next big issue I faced was eliminating all the plane flexibility in the steering itself. A conventional motorcycle transmits the steering rotation through two widely spaced large diameter tubes held in the triple trees. The steering column just keeps those fork tees in place, but the steering rotation is transmitted through those fork tubes. In my build, however, the steering column is transmitting much of the steering rotational force. If that flow of force isn't rigid, you can introduce dangerous weaves and wobbles. Under normal riding circumstances, it's unusual to encounter these unless there is some mechanical issue or loose bearing or worn underinflated tires. But high speeds or dropping down from a wheelie on the highway can create high speed weaves that can evolve into full blown tank slappers where the handlebars are violently jerked from side to side until the vehicle crashes or you're thrown off. So it was critical to get this right. I experimented with a few different methods early on and settled on trying to fabricate my own version of those fork T clamps. Although in my case, they would only clamp onto that central steering column. The fabrication tools and skills I had at the time weren't really up to the task, but it would stand as a placeholder until I could figure out a better solution. So I discovered and settled on these excellent shaft collars. These can produce a tremendous amount of clamping force and come in different shapes and sizes for different diameter shafts. They have different cuts as well, including these which are completely cut in half. The clamping force that these produce completely eliminates any concerns I had about any looseness, slipping, or play in the steering torque. To mount these, I removed the remnants of the fabricated clamp I was going to use, cutting it off and grinding it flat, and then welding half of the shaft collar to the fork tee. And just to be on the over-engineered safe side here, since this is my steering, I'm going to go ahead and weld a shaft collar on both sides of both the upper tree and the lower tree, and also a shaft collar on both sides of the parallel bar that runs alongside the steering column. I moved on then to the lower fork tree, removing the existing collars and spacers so I could weld those split shaft collars in. I cut these off with a reciprocal saw and then grinded them down to be flush with the surface and then welded on the shaft collar. I found here though that my fork had some serious alignment issues so while I was in here cutting things out, I decided to try to fix these alignment problems as well. This 1 inch ID tube passing through the front and rear plate of the fork was welded in and needed to be removed. I first tried to remove it with this large diameter drill bit in my jet knee mill, but even at the slowest setting all it did was tear up the drill bit. I ended up getting this annular cutter which finally punched through there and removed the tube. That tube was welded to both the front and the rear plate of the fork and was responsible for the misalignment. So I cut out a new tube, clamped the whole fork down with a new tube insert to make sure everything was lined up properly. I squared the end of that tube in the lathe and after that everything was looking pretty good. Here you can see both shaft collars temporarily fixed in position. After a lot of clamping and adjustments and alignments, I finally got everything square, parallel, or perpendicular as it should have been. Here you can see the fork tubes and the steering column are all level. This bar is keeping the fork tubes level and clamped down. Here some V-blocks are fashioned to clamp the upper part of the steering column in place. Here some additional V-blocks are pressed up against the inside of the fork tubes with a sliding clamp modified so that when you turn it, it expands outward. This pushes the fork tubes outward into proper alignment. This screw is sitting underneath the steering column tube here, pushing it upward. Finally, everything was looking good. The pieces were tack welded in place 
rechecking alignment along the way until I did some final welding and then some grinding and then went ahead and welded the shaft collars in. Next up would be some major updates to the foot controls and foot rests. My existing foot controls, such as the right foot control here, were hand fabricated and quite heavy. The existing foot controls and foot board assembly was also based on these two parallel three quarter inch square tubes, which I didn't feel had the stiffness and strength to resist forces involved with something like sudden braking. So I also wanted to upgrade this and add some extra rigidity here. So I had these aftermarket foot controls, which were much lighter and looked like they'd work really well. So I thought I'd upgrade to these. So the new footboard and footrest assemblies would look like this, with a third rail underneath those two parallel three quarter inch square tubes, triangulated to add plenty of strength and stiffness to that assembly. The foot controls would be mounted on new triangulated supports and later I would add these pieces to finish off the foot board assembly. To start with, I pulled out the foot rail assemblies and cut off the structure supporting the foot boards and any of the structures supporting the foot controls. I then started on making the mounts that would hold the new foot controls. I notched the end of these with an end mill so I could insert a tube in there that the foot control would mount to. I put those tubes in and then welded them in place. I used the foot controls themselves as a quick template to find and locate where the other hole would be, drilled that out, and then clamped it onto the foot rails before welding it finally and rigging it up with the actual foot controls in the bike. I repeated the process for the foot controls on the left side, welded those and mounted the left foot controls onto the new foot rails, and then I put them in the bike to see how it all looked. With both the foot controls in, it's looking pretty good. I then moved on to adding the third rail to the foot rails. This part would be pretty easy just cutting out a long tube and welding it into place. Where these foot rails intersected with the frame though, there was only two slots for those original two parallel three quarter inch tubes. So the frame would need some significant modifications to add a third slot for that third rail. And the intention of course is to have these foot rails be adjustable so they'll slide forward or back and accommodate people of different heights. The frame modification necessary to support the third rail is done at a later time, but here you can see what it will involve. These two parallel purple bars are the existing foot rail frame. In order to physically support that third frame rail, the bottom angled piece would be cut, split into three pieces, with a short length horizontal piece right in the middle, with an opening for that third rail. When I moved cross country, I didn't take my metal rack with me, it was just too large to fit in the container. So I thought it was time to build a new one so I would stop having to wrestle with and step over all my piled up metal. I built this one as before out of angle iron. I expanded its size a little bit and made it taller with some more shelves. But the principle was basically the same. The metal is organized by length and shape, separated into round tube, square tube, angle iron, and flat bar. You can separate each shape by length in approximately 1 foot, 2 foot, 3 foot, 5 foot, and 8 foot shelving, with the 8 foot and above standing vertically to the side. And of course the flat plate stands up vertically in the back. Well, that is it for this update. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. I want to give a special thanks and shout out to my new patrons. We got Brad M, the first Canada level patron at $100 a month. Thank you, Brad. That is awesome. Johnny T and Etienne V. Thank you, guys. This is great. I really appreciate the support. All of this is going to be going to speeding up this project. And every little bit helps, so I really thank you. If you're interested in becoming a patron, that really helps this project along tremendously. Please check it out at patreon.com slash mattis1976. There's tons of awesome perks that come with it, 
including ad-free videos, early access, plenty of back scene posts, and access to the private Discord server where we can discuss the build and go over all the awesome things going on. Thank you again, everybody. See you soon in the next video.